This wildlife underpass at Genesee, just completed in June, is the first of its kind on the I-70 mountain corridor. More crashes with wildlife happen here than any other place on I-70 east of the Eisenhower Tunnel. And while this underpass may look simple, it's expected to reduce that number of crashes by about 90%. It's the latest component of a statewide plan fueled by the success of prior projects to protect both people and animals. With I-25 traffic flying overhead, this underpass provides a vital route for wildlife to cross the busy road. We're getting elk, deer, bear, mountain lion, turkeys, bobcats. In the past decade or so, Colorado has become a leader in constructing wildlife crossings. That's a pretty big one. With more than 40 underpasses and three overpasses. These systems are so important. Um, it comes down to safety and economics. First of all, Colorado experiences about 4,000 wildlife vehicle collisions every year, costing taxpayers around $80 million a year. But those numbers, 4,000 and 80 million, don't tell the whole story. A lot of the, the accidents don't go reported. Once a wildlife vehicle crash hotspot is identified and a crossing is constructed, the number of those types of crashes plummets. In some of the cases, we've seen like a 97% reduction in crashes. So if you had 100 crashes last year on this, you know, 10 mile stretch of highway, now you have three. I mean, there's really not another transportation infrastructure investment I'm aware of that is going to get you that kind of a return on investment. Take a look at one of the most important crossing systems in the state, the Colorado Highway 9 Wildlife Crossing Project south of Kremlin. And one of the reasons I think it is such a great project is over 10 and a half miles, CDOT designed seven wildlife crossing structures. So that's the largest system that we have currently on the landscape that's designed for wildlife. We saw a 90% reduction in wildlife vehicle collisions. Plus, over five years, CPW recorded 112,000 instances of mule deer using the crossings. And so it's been a huge success and it also, it was um, Colorado's first two wildlife overpasses. Just like people, animals can be picky. Critters like deer and coyotes and bear may prefer an underpass, while other animals like moose, elk and pronghorn like the open space of an overpass. And that is all taken into account when constructing these crossings. And when you see them go up and when you see them work and you start to get the pictures come back, it just puts a huge smile on your face. So what we do on a weekly basis is we're sharing pictures and saying, boy, look what we caught today, you know, and these things are using it. And oh, we haven't seen a pronghorn come that close yet. You know, so it, it's just, it's so exciting. You know, so to capitalize on this momentum that's been occurring for about the last five years and to get some of these things built and to see the success, it's just, makes us giddy. More of these crossings are coming to Colorado, such as the I-25 Greenland Wildlife Overpass in Douglas County, part of the I-25 South Gap project. It's going to be a brand new wildlife bridge over I-25, 200 feet wide, about 400 feet long. When constructed, it's going to be the largest structure in North America for wildlife use. And we need that big honking structure because the target species we're looking at are big trophy elk herds that use this area that are trying to go back and forth across I-25 in this area. With a $30 million price tag, the U.S. Department of Transportation's Wildlife Crossings pilot program will cover $22 million, with the remaining coming from state agencies. These systems that cost millions of dollars, they actually can pay for themselves. Okay, if we know they're 90% effective, we can reduce crashes. We can re reduce the amount of wildlife to get hits and all that translates into money. And these things end up paying for themselves in 15 years. The Greenland Wildlife Overpass construction will begin later this year or early 2025. Farther west, the state is working to construct crossings at a heavily used mountain pass. I-70 Eastvale Pass is also a big priority for us. That project is in design and already has a ton of support from the governor's office, from other stakeholders. The proposed two underpasses and one overpass in the westbound lanes would connect to existing crossings on the eastbound lanes, allowing safe travel for elk, moose, bighorn sheep, and other wildlife. We're currently at, um, at 60% design, which is a big milestone when you're doing infrastructure projects. Um, so we've gotten about $2 million. We're really seeing Colorado become a leader in wildlife crossings. 
Experts say Colorado is in the middle of an incredible window of opportunity as we invest in upgrading our road infrastructure. And for better or worse, over the next, you know, decade plus, across the nation, and including in Colorado, we're going to be investing in these facilities and we're going to be bringing them up to the new standard. So to me, that new standard absolutely has to include wildlife considerations. And that is exactly what Colorado is doing. We took a deep dive into multiple completed projects, as well as several that are in the works at denver7.com. Reporting for Denver 7, I'm Stephanie Butzer.